Well, okay, I'm here in the beautiful city of Nice, France. Attending a family wedding for the past few days. Wedding's actually a couple of tomorrow. Tonight I've gone out to some kind of a pre-wedding uh, planned. Uh, unfortunately, as usual, it seems to be the case with me. I've lost all my luggage, everything that I had. I've had to get new stuff, even my carry-on. Anyway, it seems to be a theme for me, but I wanted to do a quick little uh, video, kind of a Q&A for you guys from a question that had come up from one of the previous videos. And that is a question about uh, on my the three-step irrigation concept that I had uh, talked about in Pensacola. And the question was, what is your total time of irrigation after instrumentation and before filling? And how much is enough time? and how do I know that when to stop irrigating and when the canals are ready to be filled? That's actually a really good question because we've been told a number of um, axioms or if you will, just uh, anecdotal type of numbers in terms of I've heard 45 minutes of irrigation is necessary for proper disinfection. Uh, in fact, if you do proper kind of looking up in the literature, you find there's very little evidence for any of that stuff that hasn't really been done anything to specify what is the exact length of time necessary in order to have successful outcomes. And that's a problem. Volume of irrigation has been known to be important, but that is just with pure volume, which doesn't necessarily mean just with positive pr pressure. If you add any type of activation through any form of piezoelectric effect with uh, kind of uh, your ultrasonics or any of these, uh, you know, lasers and or general wave, any of these things, but all they do is they essentially are trying to increase the rate of reaction through kinetic energy of the solutions that are being used in this case sodium hypochlorite as well as our chelating agents all of these are going to change that length of time obviously so how do we really know if the canal is clean or not it is and when do we know when it's time to to fill it unfortunately some of that goes with experience and knowledge knowing that you have reached the working length fully and once you have cleaned the apical portion of the canal adequately which is the more important part rather than the coronal part. That's why massive tapers are not necessarily as important as having a slightly larger and better fitted apical diameter, which is called gauging. I'll probably do a video on gauging for you guys at some point to be a little bit more precise about how that is done. But uh, it's a combination of things that you're gonna basically put together. Have you achieved all of your objectives? Have you reached the full working length? Have you increased it to a size that you think is gauged to be adequate? And then throughout this process, you've been irrigating. And then how long it takes for you to achieve that is in essence, going to be the amount of time that is necessary for you to kind of uh, call irrigation time, if you will, right? Um, the, the, the studies that or people that have talked about 45 minutes of irrigation have essentially been talking about uh, this uh, one uh, study by Grossman back uh, many years ago where a whole pulp was put in a petri dish and um, sort of applied it took about 45 minutes for it to get uh, dissolved. Of course, that's not a very clinically relevant situation because the mass part of the pulp is going to be removed with our instruments through mechanical instrumentation and then all we have is just little slivers of tissue that need to be removed and uh, that is going to be through dissolution of tissue with the use of some hop chloride and that brings up a whole other issue as well here is that you are using your disinfectants as well as your tissue dissolutions which both of those are going to be sodium hypochlorite in different kind of uh, metrics when you have vital cases you rely more on its dissolution quality and when you have necrotic cases you rely more on its disinfection quality so you want to make sure that you have a higher concentration when you have vital cases which is kind of counterintuitive and a lower concentration so it's less toxic in necrotic cases and this is how you're going to kind of figure out what you're going to use now again what when i talked about triton as having all of that stuff in one we decided to choose like four percent which was kind of a proper range for having both the tissue dissolution as well as having this infection component all in one that's the hypochlorite concentration and then with the uh, chelating agents uh, happening at the same time simultaneously you're going to have uh, the so-called uh, continuous chelation as a term as a result of that you're going to um, have your full effect in one solution and how long should that be in place I personally can tell you from a combination of my use of piezoelectric effect with my ultrasonics as well as positive irrigation as well as the use of some negative irrigation throughout the process uh, from the time of the access until I am ready to fill uh, the case that is usually always done within 30 minutes so that amount of instrumentation irrigation time is always within 30 minutes i would probably say more like 20 minutes or so uh, of the time that goes to that specific 
time of uh, disinfection and chelation. And from the studies I've done in my own patients in the past, having pulled charts to see what have been the outcome of these cases, I can tell you that we ended up having very nice outcomes of, of about 97%, 97.6% in uh, about 100 cases, 300 cases that we tried to follow. We managed to get a hold of 100 of them after five years and they still had their, case, they still had their teeth, showing that the success rate you can expect from this kind of irrigation combination of positive pressure using our you know, sodium hypochlorite as well as negative pressure combination with piezoelectric effect of activation, you can get very good outcomes. But the main point here is making sure you find all the canals, which is, remember, is the, one of the main sources of failure, and then getting down these canals to the apex so you've cleaned the entire space out, achieving proper length and proper apical diameter so you can facilitate your irrigation. And through by doing that alone, you're going to have very good outcomes. So you shouldn't be really focusing on how long does it take, but rather, how and when have you achieved all of the objectives that you've set out to achieve at which time you are then ready to fill. So drying the canal with paper points is another indication. If you see a lot of bleeding on the wall sides, that means that it's not adequately cleaned out. You need more irrigation and probably larger apical diameter. If you see drainage, then you probably are going to need to have uh, some calcium hydroxide in there so it can have some further effects in the long run. A number of those factors are important, but just remember the focus on the full objectives rather than any specific time frame for when you should fill. That's the most important. It's the same concept for single visit uh, appointment versus two visit appointment. These are the same uh, kinds of uh, things that you have to keep in mind. All right guys, I hope it wasn't too noisy. Right behind me is uh, East France. There's a bunch of cars passing by all the time. So I hope it wasn't too busy. And I'm gonna make another video for you guys later on. And until then, for real within now, I'm Alan Nisse. Well, let's save some tea. Thank you.